Okay, the big burning question, why I left the Spice Girls. I was meant to leave in September, and the girls knew that, but I was due to do a breast cancer interview, which was very close to my heart. The schedule wouldn't permit it, it got cancelled, and it made me kind of question things, my own values and my principles, and I just felt, you know what, well, I'm meant to be the advocate of girl power, and, you know, you've got to get your priorities right, so I had to leave. <laughs> what can I say? It was like a marriage. Um, we fell in love, had this whirlwind romance. But like one in three marriages, you know, it didn't work. <laughs> Leaving the Spice Girls, the only way I can describe it, it was like I was on the top of a mountain. I didn't know what I was going to do, where I was going. But sometimes in life, instinctively, you know you've got to jump. The last nine months, I think, looking back in hindsight, I was pretty much in mourning. But now I feel like... There is light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> if you're wondering who Harry is, he came into my life in November and I was very, very lonely. He's faithful no matter what I do. And you know what? Harry is a dog. It's funny how everybody's really analysed my image. You know, Ginger was based on me when I was about 20 years old. You know, as far as my image and, you know, who is Jerry Halliwell and who is Ginger? Well, actually, I'm exactly the same person. My heart and my mind is still the same. Maybe I'm just, the, the, the dressing is different. Last year was quite a cathartic moment for me because I sold all my Ginger clothes off for kids with cancer. The, the question of role models, a bit of a responsibility. Obviously, you know, I was always the evangelist of girl power and I feel that basically I'm just trying to take that one step further. Girl power evolved into a real power and I had the opportunity to do something really productive with my fame. So if I can make a difference by speaking out with breast cancer or doing work for the UN then that's my part of my contribution to the world. And that's why I got involved with the breast cancer societies in America and England. Oh yes, then, a week later, I had to go and sing happy birthday to the Prince of Wales. The following week, I went to the UN in New York, and this was for a briefing, but it got leaked to the press earlier, so I had to do a press conference. It was kind of scary because, on one hand, to, to feel something in your heart, but to articulate you know, a certain subject is two different things. That's what I've been trying to do in the last year, is just get my feet back on the ground. And then after that, I went back to the studio. In the back of my mind, I probably wanted to do something solo, but I dared not admit it even to myself because I was so afraid. And, and then I began to write my album. I'd written a lot of melodies um, during the summer, a lot of lyrics, and I just poured every drop of emotion that I had into those songs. It was really, really therapeutic. My kind of manifesto for the album was, look, this is the last album I ever do, let's take it to the max, let's not be shy here. It's, you know, it's a big part of me. I've, you know, I wrote a lot of songs when I was with the Spice Girls, and, you know, and I took whatever I gave to the Spice Girls with me, and I'm hoping my music will appeal to, you know, Spice Girl fans, and more. My album is eclectic, eclectic. It's Public Enemy meets Marilyn Monroe. It's Johnny Rotten meets Julie Andrews. Shirley Bassey, oh, who can Shirley Bassey meet? Sid Vicious, there you go. It's furious, but then it's reflective. Actually, when I wrote this album, what I did was kind of paint pictures. It took you to Switzerland, to Spain. I'm half Spanish, this half. Okay, Chico Latino is, you know, Spanish coming out of me. My mother's Spanish. And in actual fact, she helped me write the song. You know, I'm really tapping into my Latin temperament on this. We've got this really mad track on the album, it's called Let Me Love You, and it's got this kind of Bangra um, sitar feel to it. Other tracks on the album are, uh, sometimes it's like the essence of the whole album, it's me searching within, you know, chasing answers, what life's really all about. Bag It Up is about the battle of sexes. You know, he likes this, she likes that. It's really upbeat 70s, fourth floor disco. People power. Okay, Look At Me is about how society, we're all obsessed with image. The lyrical content of things like, um, I'm a drama queen, if that's your thing, baby. I can even do reality, so I'm taking it, I'm laughing at myself. I think everybody should know me by now. I'm messing with you. Look At Me on one level can say, hey, look at me. Look at me. On the other hand, it is about 
public image. Okay, I'll give you a little preview. Five, six, seven. Look at me, poop and shake it, shake. You can take it all because <laughs> this can save is free. The video took three days to shoot and we were doing 18 hour days. Oh, it's legit this morning. The director, Vaughan Arnell, could really take on my ideas and was fantastic at translating them, but we really got on the same wavelength about it. When I wrote the song, I literally had, had visions of, of images that I wanted to see. And when I saw it come to life, it was just like amazing, absolutely amazing. She's back! OK, the four characters are the vamp, narcissistic, in love with herself. The opposite of that is the nun, the virgin, in love with God, in love with the world. Then you've got the bride, represents chastity. Opposite that is the PR woman who represents workaholic. She's got to make the deadline, darling. OK, that's all I've got time for. Is this the beginning or is it the end? But good night and thank you very much. <laughs>